European Union leaders added Bosnia to the list of official candidates to join the wealthy 27 nation bloc. The Western Balkans country joined the waiting room despite continuing criticism of the way it is run. The approval was just a formality after European affairs ministers agreed unanimously earlier in the week to endorse a recommendation from the bloc's executive arm to grant Bosnia the status. The war in Ukraine has served as an accelerator for the bloc's enlargement process. More than 6 lakh new cases of cervical cancer and more than 3 lakh 40 thousand deaths from the disease were reported around the world in 2020, according to an observational study published in the Lancet Global Health Journal. Though the incidence of cervical cancer has decreased in many parts of the world, notably in Latin America, Asia, Western Europe and North America, over the past three decades, the burden remains high in many low- and middle-income countries. The study found major declines in cases in Latin American countries including Brazil, Colombia and Costa Rica, Asian nations like India, Thailand and South Korea, and Poland, Slovenia and Czech Republic in Eastern Europe. Countries with largest average declines in incidence rates per year include Brazil, Slovenia, Kuwait and Chile. The highest increases in rates were seen in Latvia, Japan, Ireland, Sweden, Norway, Northern Ireland and China. The study used the International Agency for Research and Cancers Global Cancer Observatory 2020 database to estimate the burden of cervical cancer, incidence and mortality rates in 185 countries. In 2020, overall incidence was 13 per 1 lakh women, mortality was 7 per 1 lakh women. As many as 172 out of 185 countries saw more than 4 cases per 1 lakh women per year threshold for elimination set by World Health Organization. The development of effective vaccine against the human papilloma virus, which causes cervical cancer and screening programs have made cervical cancer a largely preventable disease. China's hospitals are facing the biggest challenge under overwhelmingly huge wave of COVID cases and a shortage of health workers as Chinese authorities continue to ease the dreaded COVID lockdowns, lengthy quarantines and regular mass testing. Since the authorities rolled out a new 10-point plan Wednesday to ease its stringent COVID-19 controls and allowing some infected people to quarantine at home rather than in centralized facilities, cases surged as hospitals faced increased workload. In cities such as Gangso, Hebei and Beijing that have taken the lead in implementing the new policy, fever clinics are full of patients and cross infections between patients and doctors have begun to emerge. Capital Beijing wore a deserted look as people stayed indoors amid reports of COVID cases in every nook and corner. Pharmacies are running short of fever-reducing medicines and long queues were seen at fever clinics. Beijing is building more fever clinics at hospitals and primary care facilities as a part of efforts to cope with a spike in COVID infections. As its medical infrastructure comes under increasing strain after a rapid easing of virus control measures. The city also saw a surge in flu-like cases and emergency calls last week, the authorities said. Many patients rushed to the hospitals to treat non-COVID ailments after the COVID restrictions were lifted. The rapid development of the outbreak has put great short-term pressure on medical services. The deputy director of the Beijing Municipal Health Commission said at the briefing, warning of a continuous rapid rise in cases. 
European Union foreign ministers have imposed a new round of sanctions against individuals and organizations over human rights abusers in Iran. They also blacklisted eight drone makers and air force commanders in response to Tehran's alleged supply of drones to Russia. The EU's foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell said the union is targeting those responsible for this continued repression against protesters. The EU ministers in a statement said these weapons provided by Iran are being used indiscriminately by Russia against Ukrainian civil population and infrastructure causing horrendous destruction and human suffering. According to media reports, the EU measures hit top Iranian security officials and a hotline cleric, the Islamic Republic of Iran Broadcasting, its director and a news anchor were also targeted by the new sanctions for airing forced confessions of detainees. Bangladesh celebrated its 52nd Victory Day known as Bijos Dibos to mark the liberation from the Pakistan in 1971 with enthusiasm and public participation. On this day in 1971, Pakistani armed forces led by General A.A.K. Niyasi had surrendered before the Indian Army and Mukti Bahini Liberation Force of Bangladesh with over 90,000 of his troops which entered the nine-month-long struggle of the people of Bangladesh. The day which began with President Hamid and Prime Minister Hazina paying rich tributes to the martyrs of the Liberation War at the National Memorial in Sabar and to Benga Badu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman at his memorial. President Abdul Hamid and Prime Minister Sheikh Hazina witnessed the colorful parade by the Bangladesh Armed Forces at the National Parade Square in Dhaka while schools, colleges and residential areas celebrated the Bijoy Dibos with flag hosting, singing of the national anthem and organizing cultural programs. Greeting the people of Bangladesh on the occasion of Victory Day, Indian External Affairs Minister Dr. Yes Jayashankar in his message to Bangladesh Foreign Minister said that the shared sacrifices of both the countries and the outlook for the future continue to inspire the vibrant India-Bangladesh relationship. New Zealand on Tuesday passed a law banning cigarettes for future generation in the country. It is considering an attempt to bring in a near total tobacco ban from next year. According to media reports, the law passed by parliament means that anyone born after 2008 will never be able to buy cigarettes or tobacco products in the country. The legislation will also reduce the amount of nicotine allowed in smoked tobacco products and cut the number of retailers able to sell tobacco by 90%. New Zealand's Associate Health Minister Dr. Aisha Veral in a statement said this legislation accelerates progress towards a smoke-free future. Retailers licensed to sell tobacco will be cut to 600 by the end of 2023 from 6,000. According to government statistics released in November, the smoking rate in New Zealand is already one of the lowest in the world with just 8% of the adults smoking daily. The United States has announced a nuclear fusion breakthrough, a historic step towards the promise of near limitless clean energy and may help the fight to curb climate change. U.S. Department of Energy said researchers at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory LLNL, in California for the first time produced more energy in a fusion reaction than was used to ignite it, something called net energy gain. The achievement will pay the way for advancements in national defense and future of clean power, officials said. Speaking at a news conference in Washington, U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Graham Holm, appearing alongside with scientists, 
said this is a landmark achievement for the researchers and staff at the National Ignition Facility who have dedicated their careers to seeing fusion ignition become a reality and this milestone will undoubtedly spark even more discovery. Nuclear fusion is described as the holy grail of the energy production. It is the process that powers the sun and other stars. It works by taking pairs of light atoms and forcing them together. This fusion releases a lot of energy. Proponents of fusion hope that it would one day produce nearly limitless carbon-free energy, displacing fossil fuels and other traditional energy sources. Sri Lanka's gross domestic product has contracted by 11.8% in the third quarter of 2022. The quarterly performance has been the worst so far this year as the GDP has contracted 7.1% over the period from January till September. The island nation has been facing its worst ever economic crisis which involved two years of money printing and a currency collapse. The biggest decline was seen in industries at 21.2% while services contracted by 2.6%. Agriculture was estimated to have declined by 8.7%. The United Kingdom has been in the grip of a cold spell with temperatures plummeting around the country. Three young boys have been killed after falling into an ice-covered lake as the country recorded its coldest night of the year so far. Heavy snowfall is disrupting air traffic, train networks and roads. Parts of London's underground network were suspended or faced delays, while motorways were gridlocked due to snow. The Met Office recorded temperatures as low as minus 15.7 degrees Celsius in northern Scotland, while it continued to issue weather warnings elsewhere in the country. According to media reports, there were multiple closures on M25, the UK's busiest highway which circles the capital. United Nations is looking to set up a multi-donor fund to revitalize, preserve and promote ancient and tribal languages across the globe, including ancient Indian languages such as Prakrit, Pali and Sharda, among others. The International Decade of Indigenous Languages program by UNESCO has launched a task force that aims to translate these languages, including other indigenous ones from across the world, to more accessible modern ones to preserve and promote them. The fund will be available to communities and non-governmental organizations, according to Mr. Gaur, who co-chaired the 8th meeting of the task force in December, a new action plan will be implemented by all member countries. UNESCO established the Global Task Force for making a decade of action for indigenous languages on March 22, 2021. The members include Canada, Iceland, Norway, Latvia, Russia, Ukraine, Bolivia, Peru, Australia, India, etc. Mr. Gau said, There are nearly 1,700 languages in India, out of which there is no data for 949 languages. The fund set up by the UN can be utilized for the digital archiving of the lost languages. The government of Japan has provided a grant of Rs 14 million to the government of Nepal under the grant assistance for grassroots human security projects for the construction of a health post in Nepal's rural municipality. The number of journalists jailed around the world for practicing their profession has touched a record high with 363 reporters deprived of their freedom as of December 1, 2022. According to the 2022 prison census released by the committee to protect journalists.
For the first time, a new gene editing technology called data editing was used to modify immune cells and successfully treat a teen with treatment resistant leukemia. US Senate passes record 858 billion US dollars in annual defense spending. Indian origin Leo Varadkar re elected as Ireland's PM under coalition government.